stun man. Look at me! So you still the wreck, huh? Still here. You can do anything you want to him. I hired you to be an actor, Rick. Not a TV cowboy. You're better than that. Line. Hey everybody, it's Chris Bumbray here again for JoeBlow.com with a review of the much-anticipated ninth film from Quentin Tarantino, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Now, QT's movies are always an event, and this one's no exception, especially with his constant threat to retire from movies after completing his tenth feature. Indeed, this does feel a lot like Tarantino's magnum opus, with him bringing together all of his strengths for this epic deep dive into Hollywood circa 1969. While the Manson family slayings are the hook this is baited with, Tarantino wasn't lying when he went on record saying that this wasn't a Charles Manson movie. Rather, it's used to illustrate QT's theory that this event was the ultimate end to the golden age of Hollywood, ushering in a newer, more cynical area, making this his fairy tale look at what Hollywood and its movies used to be, in that it's shown here to be a constantly sunny town filled with larger-than-life movie gods, great music and excitement, until the family arguably ended this hedonistic paradise. The movie focuses on a fictional B-lister named Rick Dalton, one of the many men who would have been Steve McQueen with better breaks. He's played by an unusually vulnerable Leonardo DiCaprio, who plays him as a stuttering non-actor who knows his meager talent has been stretched about as thinly as it can and is on the cusp of extinction in this rough town. He's accompanied on his journey by his trusty gopher, stuntman Cliff Booth, a man of mystery whose affection for his best friend slash employer seems to be the genuine article. Meanwhile, Margot Robbie plays the real-life Sharon Tate, who was married to Roman Polanski at the time, and many have commented on her lack of dialogue, but they seem to be missing the point a bit. Her Sharon Tate is meant to be symbolic of a whole era, and this explores her iconic perceived innocence. But this isn't a Sharon Tate biopic, nor is it necessarily meant to be. That said, Robbie perfectly captures her here. Overall, though, this is DiCaprio and Pitt's movie through and through, with them dominating. Notably, Tarantino ditches the chapter headings he's been using for a while now, and while it's still built around extended set pieces such as Rick Dalton's work on the TV show Lancer and Booth exploring the Manson family-run Spawn Ranch, it has a looser structure than anything he's done since Jackie Brown. It's classic Hollywood filmmaking at its boldest, bringing an eclectic mix of genres together. It has lots of drama and commentary on the business, but it's also frequently hilarious, with DiCaprio once again showing how underrated his comic chops are, previously shown in The Wolf of Wall Street. There's also the occasional heavy doses of ultraviolence and a good chunk of action, such as a quick brawl between Booth and Mike Moe's uncanny Bruce Lee. The supporting cast is off the chain excellent, with Tim Oliphant as Lancer star James Booth, who, if you look him up, his real-life downfall is among the darkest Hollywood tales and only winked at here once, as well as the late Luke Perry in a short but excellent performance as the other Lancer co-star, Wayne Maunder. Then there's Margaret Qualley as the Manson family member who takes a liking to Booth, Kurt Russell and Zoe Bell as stunt coordinators, the great Bruce Dern filling in for Burt Reynolds as George Spahn, Al Pacino as a hilarious Hollywood agent, and tons of cameos from Tarantino regulars and cult icons. This is an especially fun movie if you know the era and have read Mark Harris's Pictures of Revolution and John Gregory Dunn's The Studio. Video, both of which provide fascinating background to the on-screen action. Even if not, though, it's impossible to imagine anyone who comes to Joe Blow and not falling hard for this Hollywood epic. It might be one of Tarantino's last films, but it's also one of his best, and in my humble opinion, his best since Pulp Fiction. Although, give me another decade and maybe another dozen or so viewings before making any final decisions. Suffice to say, I absolutely loved it, and it gets a 10 on 10 for me. It's maybe the quickest two hours and 40 minutes I've ever spent in the theater, and it's definitely my favorite movie of the year so far. Until next time, I'm Chris Bumbray for JoeBlow.com. I'm Rick Dalton. It's my pleasure, Mr. Schwartz. Call me Miles. Put it there. That's your son? No, that's my stunt double, Cliff Booth. Last night, we watched a Rick Dalton double feature. <laughs> oh, the shooting. <laughs> I love that stuff, you know, with the killing. A lot of killing. Anybody order fried sauerkraut? No, I'm a stunt man. Look, girl, look at me. So you still the wreck, huh? Still here. You can do anything you want to him. I hired you to be an actor, Rick. Not a TV cowboy. You're better than that. Line. Cut!
just embarrass yourself like that in front of all those goddamn people. <laughs> What's the matter, partner? It's official, old boy. Door to me. I'm Sharon Tate. I'm in the movie. You're in this? That's me. I play Miss Carl. In this town, I can all change like that. Hey, you're Rick fucking Dalton. Don't you forget it. <laughs>